We're now five albums in to a solo career that has definitely taken a turn with this album. Uh, the person that we speak of is, of course, Eson. And this album is one whose name I will no doubt destroy. And I fully expect all of you out there in the universe to aid my pronunciation through the comments of Das Seelenbrocken, which is roughly translated to the soul breaking or soul destruction, something along those lines. Now for those of you who have been around for a while here in the Cover Killer Nation, you know that I've covered many Eson albums in the past. I've covered Aramida last year. I covered, I believe, after. I, I'm trying to remember all that I have covered. I think the only two that I have not gotten the opportunity to speak about uh, were The Adversary and Engel, the very first two albums that he put out as a solo artist. Now, if you guys remember what I had talked, whenever I talked about after, if you guys remember last year whenever I spoke about Aramida, we know that Ishan is definitely an individual that seems to really have reinvented himself. Uh, really also reinvented the idea of progressive black metal a little bit, or at least just progressive music in general, adding a very dark edge to it, a dark atmosphere uh, that has definitely clouded it, at least in his world. With this album right here... There is definitely a sea change afoot. There is definitely something uh, that is necessary, I guess, whenever you have a title that really means something, such as soul-breaking or soul-destruction, something along those lines, because you really, if you're going to use a title such as that, there really has to be musical representation that goes along with it. And like it or not, regardless of the dark cloud that's hanging over the progressive music that Isan makes, Overall, in general, already, whenever you have a title like that, there's an expectation of something that certainly seems to overlook it with a certain degree of dread and with a certain degree of personal and internal combustion and disassociation. This is an album that actually uses that title to its advantage and it gave Esau a unique opportunity to really expand his catalog a little bit more and really go into some realms that I feel could potentially alienate some people. Now this album does have remnants and strains of the powerful riffing, the very dangerous, dangerous, uh, dark tides of progressive music that we've heard on his previous affairs, uh, especially the introductionary song, uh, Hilber. It definitely showcases that that guy, that individual, is still there. He's still making music that's just like that. However, whenever you go from one to two, whenever you get to Reagan, you start to notice that there is going to be a little bit more of an expansion. The softness of the piano, the kind of desolate atmosphere in which this uh, song really is able to portray, uh, it really kind of gives you the kind of a window into how this is going to be. This is going to be a very light versus dark mental struggle, turmoil, strife uh, that is going on uh, that the title so eloquently but yet so damningly suggests. Uh, whenever you get into the first single, NACL, which of course is a, well, we're going to I think you guys all know what that's all about. Uh, really kind of uh, bases the idea a little bit, but really whenever a lot of people first caught wind of this, they either loved it or were kind of puzzled by it. And then you see and notice uh, tracks such as Pulse, Tacit 2, and Tacit. Tacit 2 and Tacit? Isn't that in reverse order? No, it's not. Rec M, Subalter C, one word titles. Very, very interesting, atmospheric, almost just soul-destroying compositions that border on having a lot of compositionary value at all. And this is not because it is negatively done. This is something that spawned truly from the depths of somebody who is within this internal strife, this soul crushing, this soul destruction, this soul division, this, this soul that seems to be just on its own and slowly but surely imploding right before our very eyes, right before truly our very ears. This is the sonic waves of desolation. This is the sonic boom of true outcry. This is the sonic representation of mental decay, of mental destruction, of mental breakdown. And it's done so in a way that really kind of represents it 
a little bit more so realistically than any other band that is able to really do it. You can have a band easily try to embody the idea of sonic decay, sonic destruction, of a mental breakdown uh, through ridiculous technicality that's kind of displaying how your mind is going 1,001 miles an hour every single second of every single day, trying, trying desperately in order to right itself. Basically an amphetamine-laced mind that constantly ticks and never seems to take a break for anybody, including the person whose head it inhabits. Instead, this is the one that has far too much time to itself. This is the one that has far too much time to reflect upon negativity. This is the mind that ticks slowly and ticks with only one thought in mind, and the destruction and the slow decay and the slow struggle just continues to eat and gnaw and destroy itself from the inside out. You get to track number 10. You get to see. You get to the longest track on this album at seven and a half minutes nearly, and you encounter abstract minimalism. You encounter something that is a little bit too technical for Sun, but for the rest of the universe, the non-drone universe, this is something that definitely can constitute minimalism, something that would constitute avant-garde, something that truly goes outside of the box and the borders of traditional and conventional musical ideas. There's an old meme that's on Facebook that has different levels, and really shows that level six with the avant-garde and basically a bunch of other different styles of abstract music, including drone, puts you basically completely and totally alienated from the remainder of society. Well, that is definitely this. This suits that level to a T. And really, whenever you think about it, the music not only represents that whole avenue of being detached from society, it truly paints the picture of a person detached from themselves, detached from their mind, almost as though saying through this abstract work that the transmutation is complete, the transformation has occurred, and now this individual and their mind are separate. They have reached that point of decay. They've reached that point of mental corrosion where now there is nothing left that hinges them on the post-border of insanity. This album has the opportunity, because of its just radical difference from a lot of his other work, especially as a solo artist, to really disassociate a lot of fans, to really distance them from this work. It's going to be one that is going to cause a great deal of stress. It's going to be one that causes a great deal of, uh, of wonder. It's going to have a lot of people talking. And some people will probably be negative. I'm taking the opposite route on this, to be perfectly honest, Nation. I'm taking the absolute opposite route on this. Whenever you notice the translation of what the title suggests, whenever you get that attitude and that avenue in your mind of what you think that that should represent sonically, and you listen to this, you start to realize that something this dark, something this out of sync, out of touch, something that seems so disassociated from the remainder of conventional music, including, including conventional heavy metal, it makes perfect sense. And not to mention the execution. The execution on this is where I really see the true fanning of the flames, where I really see the true genius behind this. Instead of tackling a conceptual idea to a radical degree, he instead installed himself into the mind of somebody slowly delving themselves into madness. This is at least my interpretation. And was able to, in that creative musical mind of his, somehow put music to things, emotions, ideas, exchanges, interactions that we perhaps have had in our lives. He has been able to really crack the code of what desolation sounds like. He's really been able to crack the code to how insanity itself may form. Whereas an artist such as Devin Townsend may display insanity in action. This album's genius is very subtle. However, this album's genius is oft times misunderstood. In many cases and in many ways, whenever you listen to an album, you listen, it, listen to it for the music. Not the body behind it, not the story behind it. Instead, it's just whether or not the music is appeasing or not. 
With this album, there's a little bit more of a complete experience to be had, and that's the reason why I believe that this album large, largely will be misunderstood. It'll be seen as a foray into electronica, dark ambient, avant-garde, and even some people may even suggest drone, but they would be fairly wrong, by an artist that kind of seemed to have everything going for him, when in reality, this was him taking us all as listeners on a journey into the insane mind of somebody whose very soul is collapsing, destroying itself, the section of somebody's thoughts and the detachment of themselves from their own body because of desolation, despair, haunt. This is an album that should be definitely digested very lightly. It's one that will be oft times misunderstood by a lot of people upon the first listen, but when thrust upon a couple different times, and after reading up on it, they'll understand that he was going for something and really nailed it. 8.75 out of 10. This is hard to understand sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't feel as though it has very much of a linear idea to it. It can sometimes feel very unnerving and it can leave you a bit disheveled and fractured. But the thing to remember is, that's the point. Check it out. <laughs>